Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Nolan. I'm Joy. Uh, our project is on predicting network dynamics with a machine learning approach using a parallel setup. Uh, so the problem we focus on this summer is the network problem. So predicting large dynamical networks, such as social networks or biological networks, is very important to research. Our approach is to use a machine learning technique known as reservoir computing to accomplish this. The only problem is that most real-life networks are too large for a single reservoir computer to work. So our extension for large systems is to use multiple reservoirs in parallel to predict the dynamics. Reservoir computing is the name of the machine learning technique we're using, and it's for predicting time series, data that changes over time. Uh, it uses an artificial neural network capable of complex dynamics, which we call a reservoir, uh, and which is made up of sparse, randomly connected nodes. And the nodes contain information that evolves over time and learns the dynamics of the system. So there's two steps to reservoir computing, the first of which is the training phase. In the training phase, you take your model data and you input it step by step into the reservoir and at each step receive a reservoir computer output. Once you've input all of your training data to the reservoir, you then adjust the output weights of the output layer so that the reservoir computer outputs match the model data that you fed it originally. This allows the reservoir to capture the dynamics of the system. The trained output layer is in contrast to the input layer in the reservoir, both of which are randomly generated. Uh, then is the prediction phase, where instead of feeding it new real data, you use the last prediction as the next input to the reservoir. This works because if the reservoir's computer setup is good at predicting, which it is, the prediction will be very close to the real data. So by feeding it the prediction, it's very close to feeding it the real data, and it can keep itself consistent for a while if you give it enough training. Um, what we did with our network is use a parallel training approach where each node gets a reservoir assigned to it. Um, the reservoir receives data from the node it's assigned to and all of the neighbors of the assigned node. Uh, this image is simplified. It focuses on node two connected to reservoir two because its only neighbors are one and three. Um, theoretically, reservoirs one and three should have more data inputs because nodes have more connections, but that would make the diagram too complicated. When you do the training, you adjust the output weights in the output layer so that each reservoir predicts its own node's data, not the data of the neighbors. Uh, there you go. Uh, for the parallel prediction scheme, it works very similar to the regular prediction scheme in that you feed the assigned node's data back into the assigned reservoir. Uh, the difference, however, in the parallel scheme is you also um, reinsert this data from each reservoir into its neighboring reservoirs. Uh, you can see that in the animation above. Uh, again, this image is only really accurate for reservoir two. Reservoirs one and three should be receiving input from other nodes. We've just uh, not shown those for simplicity. The test system that we're using is called the Kuramoto oscillator model. It's a large network of oscillators, each of which has a phase angle, essentially going around in a circle. Uh, there's the differential equation that we use to describe how the oscillators move. Basically what it says is that each oscillator node has a natural frequency it wants to rotate at. Our natural frequencies range from minus pi on two to pi on two, and you can see the nodes color-coded to represent that frequency. Also, if there is a connection between two nodes, then that connection tries to pull their phase angles to be at the same place. Uh, the, uh, the network that we're using has frequency assortativity, which basically means that similar natural frequencies are more likely to have connections. You can see that because the colors are clustered. So we ran our prediction method for our 50 node system. Uh, we're just showing you two nodes in particular, the signs of their phase angles. The top uh, node you can see has a much lower frequency in the network. Uh, we believe that due to this, the um, the oscillator is pulled more commonly, causing more complex dynamics. Uh, you can see the prediction starts to break down somewhere around 70 seconds. We believe this is because the more complex dynamics, it makes it harder for the reservoir to learn. This is contrasted with the oscillator we show you on the bottom, which has a much higher frequency. Uh, this one is not necessarily pulled as uh, strongly by its neighbors. Um, it almost to the naked eye looks like a regular sine wave. 
If you look very closely, you'll be able to see that there are differences in peak separation, so it's not a simple sine wave. But nonetheless, we believe that this resemblance makes it easier for the reservoir to predict it. Here we have a movie, essentially, of the predictions of all of the nodes in our system. What you're seeing is that each node has two lines coming out of it, a red one and a blue one. The blue line represents the true phase angle of that node, while the red one represents our predicted phase angle. A black node is a node where the prediction is very accurate. A yellow node has a large error. Um, you can see that they, all the nodes start being predicted very well. As time goes by, some of them start to drift off. But since its neighbors are still being predicted well, um, the neighbors can pull it back on track. Eventually, the low frequency uh, oscillators up here all go off course together, in which case they're not going to be pulled back on target anymore. But even when the angles are wrong, you can see they still rotate with approximately the same frequency. Contrast the nodes down here. Uh, which have a higher frequency and thus predict better and stay more in sync with how it's supposed to look. All right, so some future work that we have we can do is to test this parallel scheme on other network models, um, some neuron activity models such as Fitzhugh Nagumo. Uh, we can reduce the number of reservoirs by having each one predict multiple nodes. Uh, this will be important for very large networks. Our current system has one reservoir per node. This doesn't really work for some systems where there are millions of nodes. So our hope is to reduce the, uh, uh, increase the number of nodes each reservoir can predict. And then lastly, uh, we hope to extend this scheme for situations where we don't know the network connections. Currently, we know which nodes are connected to each other. Our preference would be to simply have 50 oscillators with no known connections and use um, an approach to connect them preferentially. Uh, we would like to thank our advisors, uh, Michelle Girvin and Otten Tom Antonsen, Keshav, the grad student who worked with us and helped us a lot on this project, uh, Dan Serrano and Taylor Prendergast for running the Trends program, and of course our Trends cohort, who was an awesome cohort to spend time with. Thank you. Thank you.